Let's talk about why independent music artists should use download gates and give away their music for free to actually make more money. Hi guys, it's John here at Hyped It. I'm really excited about today's video because I got a great email from Chris. Chris says, John, your emails to me always describe the same thing, a download gate. No one is interested in the download, fans simply stream. Um, so you, Chris replied that back to one of my emails, um, you know, describing how to use download gates. And clearly his, his thought is, well, streaming is killing music stores and music sales, so clearly streaming is also killing download gates. Is that the case? I want to talk about that in this video. Before I dive into this a little bit deeper, let me first explain what a download gate is. I think that's a really important piece of context that we need here. A download gate is a tool that lets you trade a free download of your music in exchange for fan contact information as well as social support by your fans. So likes, comments, reposts, shares, those kinds of things on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all these other social platforms. So there's really two benefits that come out of a download gate when you use it. For every download that you're giving away, you're getting fan contact information, you're growing your fan email list, you actually have an email list with fan names and email addresses on it. And secondly, you are making your music more viral because whenever somebody downloads your music and then automatically reposts it on SoundCloud or maybe shares it on Facebook or tweets about it on Twitter, uh, or posts it on Instagram or whatever it is, you are getting viral distribution, which means more people hear your music. So those are the two key benefits of using a download gate. Now, but how could a free download help you making more money? Right, that seems insane, That like something doesn't match here. Uh, so let me explain that. Sales for your music and for everything related to your music, like tickets or merchandise and those kinds of things, happen when, when two things occur. The first thing is your fans need to be in love with you. You're not gonna get somebody who's just casually, you know, streaming your music on Spotify once and then moving on to another artist. You're not getting that person to buy anything from you. There's just not enough of a connection there with you for them to wanna to financially support you, right? So the first thing is there has to be a close connection to the fan. The fan has to literally be in love with you and your music. And the second thing that needs to happen is you need to make them offers. If you don't offer something to your fans, like actively offer something, then you're not gonna make sales, right? Actively offering means you wanna send them an email. You need to let them know here is something they can buy. You can't expect your fans to just go out and, and Google and like find all things um, about you by themselves. That's usually not how that works. But if you can engage your fans enough to fall in love with you and you make them offers, this is when sales happen. So it turns out email is a great tool for both of this, right? Email is a powerful tool to nurture the fan relationship. It's a great tool to make offers to your fans. And it's, by the way, it's also a great way to back up your fan base. Um, you know, let's say any of the social platforms you're gathering fans on goes out of business or changes it, its rules, like Facebook did a couple years ago with Facebook pages, then, uh, then you're screwed. But email is always safe. You always have um, a direct way of reaching your fans if you have that email list. So, so don't forget about that aspect. It's really important if you're serious about your music career. Now, I'm talking about using email lists to make money, those kinds of things. Let me, let me throw in a more concrete example here. Let's, let's do some quick math. Let's compare um, how making money through streams and making money through an email list and direct offers uh, might differ, right? So uh, let me compare this with Spotify. So I use Spotify as an example. Spotify pays you about 0.004 dollar per stream, which means in order to make 20 bucks, you would need about 5,000 streams, right? And these, those numbers always change a little bit, and it's 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 sort of you know rough calculation, but but assume like 5,000 streams will make you 20 bucks. 
So I compare this to my own merchandise store, right? I have a merchandise store. Um, I'm using a print on demand service. It doesn't cost me anything. I don't carry an inventory. I didn't have to pay to put up the store. I only uploaded the graphics and that's it. So I sell a t-shirt on that store for $30. Um, when, when a fan buys a t-shirt, store takes the 30 bucks, they deduct 10, it costs them 10 bucks to you know, make and ship the t-shirt, and then they give 20 over to me. So in direct comparison, I can sell one t-shirt in my merch store, or I can get 5,000 streams on Spotify to make the same 20 bucks. Now, but it gets better, right? So let's say I used my download gate to grow my fan email list to a thousand contacts. Now, at the click of a button, I can send them the, the link to my merch store with a t-shirt and I tell them why this is a special t-shirt and, uh, and they can buy it there with just a few clicks, right? So let's say out of those thousand fan contacts, only 1% ends up buying that t-shirt, right? There will be 10 folks buying that t-shirt. I told you I make 20 bucks profit on a t-shirt, that's 200 bucks right there, right? So click of a button, my email goes out, 1% buys, I'm making 200 bucks. In order to make 200 bucks with Spotify streams, I would need 50,000 streams. I can't do that at a click of a button. This is, a, this is like a whole different <laughs> dimension. This is like real heavy lifting, right? Getting that many streams on Spotify. So what's What's my takeaway here? I'm not actually saying do one versus the other, right? This is not about using a download gate, grow your email list for direct sales um, versus putting your music out for streaming and making money from streaming royalties, right? You're not in the game of uh, just choosing one over the other. What I'm trying to get across is do both don't forget about the power of building that email list with the download gate and getting into direct sales because for most independent artists it's so much easier to make some real money selling direct to fan than hoping for you know that hail mary of like 50,000 or 100,000 streams happening on spotify it's just it's just real heavy lifting it requires a lot of promotional work as opposed to uh, a free download helping you grow your fan contact list. But so far, I guess I only explained what a download gate is and why it's valuable and why I recommend that you use it. Um, Chris's point really was uh, downloads are dead. People, are, people just want to stream music. So, um, okay, even if a download gate is valuable, you put it out there, nobody's going to download the music because people are only looking for the stream. So I think th that's sort of his point, right? Um, streaming killing download gates and uh, so let me dive a little bit deeper on this now and here's what I see so streaming is obviously growing everybody knows that right we we see that in the media we see Spotify stats so streaming is growing but I see downloads from download gates growing at the same time and and I think there's a few important reasons why that is and, and, and one of those reasons is that you as an artist, you decide how you offer your music to your fans. I actually see the smartest music artists out there not putting out the same track on a streaming platform and a download platform at the same time. Because now you have uh, the same release on two platforms competing against each other. Whereas, um, a good way is to sort of, you know, think about what's your main goal. Is your main goal for this release to build your email list, right? Build your fan base um, and, and enable you or grow your potential to sell directly to fans. If that's the case, then, you know, these artists, they put out the track on the download gate first and maybe have it out there for like four weeks or eight weeks exclusively as a download. And then only after that period do they launch the track on Spotify and Apple Music and all the other platforms. And what it does, it gives you an opportunity to have your diehard fans and the most dedicated fans that you can find, which by the way are the most important ones anyway because they are the ones who are gonna support you financially later on, have them go through the download gate so that you can capture that, that fan content information and make sure you connect them on all the social profiles and get that viral effect from the download gate, right? Nobody says you have to put up your music on all platforms at the same time. You can sequence this, right? And um, 
uh, like a great example is how the movie industry does it, right? The movie doesn't come out in the theater on DVD on a Netflix at the same time, right? It, they launch it in the theater first, and then uh, and then they bring it to DVD and then to Netflix, and then maybe eventually, you know, they run it on TV, and. Um, and you should sort of think about it the same way for your music, right? Start where it's highest value for you. And if you're trying to, you know, again, build that email list, um, selling music, sell merch, and those kinds of things, the download gate might as well be the most valuable platform that you have to put out there and use, use your music uh, to grow those contacts, right? So start there and then bring it to other platforms later. But there's another strategy out there that I see being used successfully, and that is using the download gate for exclusive content that might be different from the track that you have out on Spotify or Apple Music or some of the other platforms. There's nobody that says you have to use the same track and the same piece of music on all of those platforms, right? For example, in your download gate, you could offer a different mix of that same track. Maybe it's a remix, or maybe it's an acoustic version of the song that you only give away through the, through the download gate. Some of my most successful download gates for my own music have been remix stems, for example, right? So you can also do that. You can give away remix stems or vocals if you have sort of a vocal track. Um, and uh, and now your download gate is really focused on this exclusive piece of content that fans cannot get anywhere else. They might stream your track on Spotify, but they can still download something really unique on the download gate, and that really makes it worthwhile for a fan to download it, to share their content information, and to help that go more viral because they're you know, automatically reposting it and, and resharing it and those kinds of things. So lots of reasons and I think good strategies to use download gates in the age of streaming and combine them so that you're getting the best of both worlds. Don't just go for one strategy. You know, I definitely, again, this is not a one versus the other. This is one and the other so that you can really stack it all. Stack your sales directly to fans, but don't forget um, about streaming revenue as well. So I'm sure there's some of you watching this who are, you know, saying, okay, John, I get it, you know, download gates still have a place today, but I'm sure this is going to change like next year. Streaming is, is, is like everything and nobody's going to ever download any music anymore. So, you know what, I don't think so. I, I see sort of different trends from my end. But even if you thought that, that your worldview was true, that, was even, that would even be more of an urgent call to jump in now and use those download gates uh, as long as you still can, if you thought that window of opportunity was closing. Because think about it this way. You can always take your, your fans that you gather with your download gate, you always can take those fans to Spotify and Apple Music. You can always take those fans to stream your music. But you can't grow your email list with Spotify. Right? It doesn't work the other way around. It only works in one direction. And that's why I want to say for everybody watching this video, right? keep sharing your music with download gates, keep growing that fan base and that email list so that you can make offers to your fans and sell them things they like. That's where the real money is for most independent artists. And never forget, without fans, nothing happens. But with those fans, everything is possible. All right, I hope you like this video and I see you soon.